Hello everyone, this is Lolly. I am back with our December journal part three. Now you are going to hear thumping going on probably because we are busy packing up our upstairs so the flooring guys can come in and I'm taking a break to rest my legs and I thought I would start working on this and uh, give you uh, some more pages to work on. So another step in preparation, if you noticed uh, video two that I did in this series, I showed you some preparation to do with your ephemera, your journal cards, etc. Another thing you need to be doing is to print this out. These are the days that you can put on every page. So I have one inch circles and one inch squares. And when you print these out, it's a PDF, make sure in the settings on, on the uh, computer, when you hit print, you say print to actual size, if the size matters to you. If you have a one inch circle punch, you're going to need to have this printed in the exact size. So I have printed out two. So I have the red and the off white, which matches a whole lot better than just white does. So do that. You might want to be looking for some trims. Um, I got this one at Hobby Lobby. I love it. And you also might want to be looking for some vellum and acetate. I don't, I'm not using them today, but we will be using it soon. So this is the first page that we did. This is the cover, my, what I call a cover page or day zero in a title page. There you go. In mine, I'm using a real cover. Um, but if this is your cover uh, for your actual journal and you're not using a vinyl cover or anything, uh, this will be your actual cover for the whole journal. So let's flip that over. And remember, this is eight inches because our paper is eight inches. So my hole punch that I'm using is for eight and a quarter inch pages. So I'm going to be a little short on the top, but that's okay if it's off. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I cut from the paper, I cut this, which is three and a half inches wide, still eight, and this, which is two inches wide, and I went ahead and did the hole punches. I'm going to have these as pockets. I'm going to use the Barely Art, and here's what I do. I have, a ma I put a magnet in here under this, and I put needles in there from my other bottles, and then this is so long, it doesn't fit there, so I put a, um, I put a magnet on the side there. So let's start with this, and we're just going to do the top, bottom, and this edge right here. Now sometimes I go around the holes or in between the holes just for a little extra uh, stability. I'm lining those holes up more than I'm worried about the edges of the paper. Now this is gonna be two days right here because that way it makes our journal not quite as uh, chunky and gives us more room for photos. I'm making sure I have it right here and not that way since I'm, uh, since I'm missing um, paper on the top there due to using eight inch paper, but that's what happens when you use an eight inch paper pad. Now I'm not going to delete this. I'm showing you this is because my hand is shaky. I'm not zigzagging on purpose, so don't be afraid to do videos and show how life really is. The more I've been working, I'm giving you the update on our house while I'm doing this. The more I've been working on our house and emptying, the more exhausted I get and my hands have been shaking quite a bit. Now this is also uh, one of the pieces that I had cut from um, the actual papers. I was cutting out some things and this came out of there. So this is going to go somewhere on here, and I also need to put numbers on here. And I think I'm not gonna do the circles. I think I'm going to do the squares. So I think this is going to go here. I'm gonna give this a little black edge. So this is going to go like that, and I need a number two. So make sure you do the downloads, print this download off, and the download is for your use only. Please do not share my free files with your friends. If your friends want them, please send them to my video, and then they can get theirs from that. And this is also so bright that I have to tone it down. I could have... Uh, distress the edges of this, but I'm not distressing everything. I am just distressing things that I feel like need it to help them pop out. 
but it occurs to me as well that I want to put some trim on this. So what I'm going to do, get that off of there. Oh yeah, this is perfect. This is a new roll, so it's really a little more frayed than I want. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put the end off a little bit. And of course I'm going to use Fabri-Tac because this is fabric. And this is like a crocheted um, lace. I think it's perfect. But the question is, do I want the two to go under the lace? The other thing I could do is put it right on the lace. I think I actually like that better. This is going down. One of the things I like to do is how much, how much Fabri-Tac do I put on here? I just hold this right there. And then that shows me about how wide it is. Another thing you could do with trim is layer it. For instance, I could put this right in the middle of that as well. And I might, but I think I need to look at that and think it over and try to decide. And now that I see this, I'm not, yeah, I think it's okay for me. I'm not sure. The other thing I could do would be just a little piece, just like this under the number two. Ooh, I like that. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. So this is kind of like a banner coming down off the top. And then I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac because I'm gluing this down onto fabric. There we go. And now we have the this to put on here. And I can't glue the entire thing or it would glue my pocket shut. So I'm just going to glue the right side of it. And putting it down kind of balances the page since this is uh, heavy on the top right, this will put this on the bottom left. And now I want to make sure that I can still open that pocket. Yes, I can. And this one's open, so we are good. Fabri-Tac adheres pretty quickly, so now I can come in here. And you can use your fabric scissors if you want to trim that off. Very cute. So now we have days one and two in the bag. And let me set that aside. And then for the next day, I already have this cut out and punched. I'm saving time so we don't all have to sit through and watch that. I love this cardstock and the, it's in the kit. And so the whole paper kit is in my shop and I'm giving you a link to it underneath this video. So the next thing I did was this time I want a pocket that's going to go horizontal. So I love pockets in my journals. So this green and all the solids are not included in your kit. It's just the decorative papers and ephemera, et cetera, that come from Graphic 45. Um, this is, I, I pick up all the solids, the cardstock you see I've gotten from my local scrapbook store. This is four and three quarters wide and three and one quarter inch tall. And then this is also part of the kit. And this is uh, four and three quarters wide by two and a half inches tall. And then as you are working, you're gonna have scraps that end up coming off of other things. So this is still part of the paper. It's a half inch wide by four and three quarters and that will just do this. I love layering my pockets when I do a pocket and you see how different that is. To just put a pocket is really boring. Adding the strip helps, but adding another layer and uh, that helps as well. I could do two pockets. It could be one here, one there, but this is actually just going to be one pocket. So let's start by gluing this as a pocket. Now this gets completely glued on, but you don't have to. If you want this as a pocket, you do it. So if, I, if I'm doing something one way, you feel free to alter yours the way you want it. This would be a really cute little pocket for like a little tag. It works. And this is just a band just for prettiness, just to be pretty. And it works out that it fits right between those two holes right there. So that's cute. Great. Now this is a little doll right here. So I have this, which is, uh, it's in the ephemera that's part of the kit that you're getting, you are buying from me. Okay, it has this little tiny hole and I just wanna put something in it. So if you have, this is waxed linen, you don't need waxed linen. You can use thick thread, you can use embroidery floss. So I'm putting mine through the front 
because when I do mine like this, I like to have the, that loop that you see there, I like that to be facing the front. When we are working on a journal, it's good to remember what is happening over here because if I pop this up, is it going to catch on anything here? It might, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem, but I know that I do want to pop that up a little. And then I will trim these off unevenly. I see it's going to be in the way of my rings. So let's make them a little shorter. This is from the journaling cards. It's part of, again, it's part of the, part of the kit that you're getting. If it's just in there, it's pretty snug. So if you want, you can trim it just a pinch just to get it so it, it slides in and out of there more readily. Then you might want to round your corners off. This used to be in my shop. And if you want to distress this journaling card, you can. See, now that's gonna slide in there so much better just by removing that one little pinch there. Let's get this up on foam, but what I'm wondering is, you have to remember that if you put this up on foam, it could make it bumpy when you go to decorate this. So what we might wanna do is just kinda of clip that on there just uh, until we get the other side, but now I know that it belongs to this page. But now I'm looking at this, I think I would also like another tag in here, a double tag. So this is the other side. These are eight inch square papers. So when I cut this piece that was four and three quarters off, I had this left over. And this, if I flip it around, will make a really good tag here. So let's see, I've got this down here, so it's not gonna go in there. Let's see how tall I want that to go. And I'm thinking just about here. So it needs to be about six inches tall. The Lolly ruler is in my shop. It's a safety ruler with a raised edge on there. So let's trim this down to six. And then we have another piece that can be saved. I put these in my ephemera stash so that I don't lose them. And then I want this to be angled. So what we're going to do is just pick a place like this. Okay, take that piece that you just cut off, flip it over, line it up in that corner and cut. And that way you have this, you have your edges all matched up. Do this, round those off. Again, you can distress this if you want. Okay, now, the other thing I'm thinking though is that we have all of our stickers. We haven't gotten those out yet. Now, when you order your kit from me, most of you will be getting your stickers cut down the middle so that I could ship them easier. And I like this vertical sticker right here. And I'm thinking it could go right there, but it needs something else in addition. So I am going to look at, here's what we're going to do. We're going to cannibalize this little strip right there and use that as well. And I want it longer than the sticker, so. What I'm trying to achieve is just kind of a layered look here. If you have a fishtail punch or die, you could put that on the bottom or the other thing you could do, I'm going to fold this scrap here. I got it folded and I'm cutting up at an angle like that. And then I can use that as a template to trace. And my pointy scissors are upstairs. There we go. I think this does need a little bit of help. Okay, so here's what I was thinking, is maybe put that here and this just offset. But what I want is this hole to be somewhat in the center. There we go. So now I need to glue this down a little bit. Now the sticker is sticking a little bit, but that's not too bad. There we go. 
And now I need to repunch that hole. This would be really cute using some of the trim to come down. I'm going to use the small hole right there because the sticker has a small hole on it. Okay, and now that we've got this out, let's just go ahead and use the black. Feel free to use your uh, embroidery floss or whatever you have, or twine would be really cute as well. We're gonna do what Annette Green taught me, just separate these two here and just do a bowl. But the nice thing about using waxed linen though is that it holds what shape you put it in pretty well. So there we go. So now we have that tag and that can go in here as well. So now, even though this is just one day, we have the back of this tag we can use to put photos on. We have this card here that we can journal on and we still have a pocket to put photos in. And the other thing we're missing here is the date or the day. So we'll get that on there. So I have my one inch circle punch. I think I will do that. I think I will use this one here. You see it's very bright, even though I use the off-white um, paper. And I just think this helps to kind of tone it down. And then this would be puffed up. I think we'll do that. Let's glue this. And then when this goes up on foam, it will be offset just off from that. That's today. We have three days in the bag. We are really doing well. Thank you for watching. All those links you need are underneath this video.